Hey, this is Steve, and in this video, we're going to build a microwave diode tester. Microwave diodes have a really high forward voltage drop, which makes it difficult to test them by traditional means, such as with a multimeter. Whereas most diodes, traditional diodes, have a forward voltage drop of around 0.7 volts, a microwave diode can have a forward voltage drop of between 5 to 10 volts and even higher than that. So this particular tester uses 18 volts through a current limiting resistor to provide a what's known as a high impedance voltage source uh, to give you plenty of voltage across the diode to give it a uh, to give yourself a good reading on it. This is a schematic for it, and this is your indicator LED, your current limiting resistor, your test lead. So this is your subject diode right here. And this is a protection diode to keep that LED from burning out if you happen to test a live circuit and get current going the wrong way. So about diodes, a standard diode has a forward voltage drop around 0.7 volts, which a lot of technicians already know. A Shockey diode often used in switching power supplies has a forward voltage drop that's very low and can confuse technicians, making them think the diode is leaky or, or shorted, when in fact that's a normal forward voltage drop. Microwave diodes again have a very high forward voltage drop and you're going to need a lot of voltage to get a really decent reading on it. That's why this particular unit uses two 9-volt batteries and 18 volts. You don't need to worry about these over here for this. But for a Zener diode, if you wanted to test that, if you want the forward voltage drop on it, it is 0.7 volts, which is what most technicians are used to. However, with a Zener diode, you also have a reverse voltage drop that's predictable and by design set at a certain voltage. With this, you can test it. You just hook it up backwards and use your multimeter to be able to give you the reading of what the exact voltage that Zener diode is designed for. This is your parts list. I'm going to go through the slides quickly because you can always pause them as needed. This is a parts list. In red is the required parts, and the rest of it are parts you're going to need, but you may have you know, at home. To start off, you're going to mark the side of the enclosure, the end of it, uh, for the uh, pilot hole for the um, test lead. You're going to drill two holes using the 532nd drill bit. You're going to space them 3 eighths of an inch apart like that. Then you're going to cut the test lead to about 24 inches. So you have 24 inches of length to use. You're going to pull them through. You're going to tie them off over here for strain relief. You're going to pull it tight. And you're going to strip the ends uh, and uh, to allow for connections. You're going to mark the place for the LED. You're going to go again. You're going to go one and three thirty seconds to the center and about one inch back on the test lead side. You're going to go ahead and drill your hole there for the LED using the thirteen sixty fourth drill bit. This is your connections here. So you just want to connect it exactly like this. You have your LED. You want to make sure that you use the banded side of this this diode and the uh, long lead of this LED connected to the resistor and to um, the other side of the resistor connected to the positive lead of this nine volt clip. You're going to connect the black side of that, that one to the red side of this one. You're going to cut this off and make it short. So you're going to use this lead to connect to the other side of this LED for strain relief. So this is going to connect to the black test lead and this is going to connect to the red test lead. And you place it in there like so and solder it in. And I use heat shrink tubing to make it nice and neat. You can use electric tape if you want. And this is, here it is in place. The batteries are in place and the um, epoxy is there to uh, hold the uh, leads in and give you better strain relief and to hold the components in. And at this point, you probably want to test it just by taking the two leads and touching them together and the LED should light. Make sure when you put the epoxy in here that you have plenty of room for these batteries. You might want to put the batteries in first before you do that. Here's your final unit, um, and when you hook this um, microwave diode up as so, the uh, banded side is the cathode, the LED should light, and when you reverse it, the LED should not light, and that's an indication of a good diode. Now we're going to go through uh, an actual demonstration. The diode tester that we just built, you want to hook the black lead to the cathode, which is the banded side, and the red lead to the other side. The LED should light, as shown. Turn it around. LED doesn't light. That means that the diode is good. If it lit both ways, it's just like a wire. That means it's bad. Regular diode, same thing, banded side, black lead, lights up, turn around. 
you get nothing. That's a good diode. If you want to test the transistors, this is a PN, this is an NPN transistor right here, which means the base is going to be positive and the collector emitter are going to be negative. So you're just, it's just as if you're testing diodes. You can see it lights this way, but if I switch it around, it won't light, which indicates that it's good. PNP transistor, the base is negative, lights up, emitter to collector, turn it around, you get nothing. That's a kind of a general indication that the uh, transistor is good. There's more two transistors than that, but now if you want to test the Zener diode, you're going to have to go a little bit of an extra step. You want to hook up the, banana, the uh, actual alligator clips to the tester and if you just hook it up the, the way we have been testing with the banded side black then yeah it's going to light up but it's also going to light up the other way it's, but that's because you got a see it still lights up but that's because you have a voltage drop it's still a, but it's a higher voltage drop and we're going to just actually test what that voltage is on here so we got it hooked up and we're going to be able to tell what kind of zener diode this is what the voltage is just by hooking up the voltmeter to it and that's a 5.6 volt Zener diode right there and this will test Zener diodes up to about 15 volts so that's it that's the uh, high voltage diode tester it does more than just test microwave diodes but it primarily is its purpose primarily is microwave diodes and should be able to test all of them very handily because of the uh, 18 volt um, uh, power supply I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching